Hello, welcome to Zigma Tech Learning Hub. I will be your instructor for fine art. You can call it visual art as well, cultural and creative art. Now for this class, we are going to be taking our exercises from the exam guide app. Now, if you don't have this application installed already in your device, I will advise you download this app in order for you to follow along this class. Now, Exam Guide is a leading educational app that helps students prepare adequately for exams, for various exams, such as UTME, post-UTME, WASE, GCE, KCPE, IJMB, JUPEP, Calbepedia, BESE, JSCE, NCEE, NECO, to mention but a few. You can download the app from our website, www.examguide.com or you can download it as well as using your Google Play Store. Please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell to update, to be updated on new videos as we upload. Now, if you're ready for today's class, okay, let's get started. All right, welcome back. I feel so excited for having you back. Now, um, let us go into the part two of the traditional Nigerian arts traditional art in what in Nigeria. So remember in our first class, we talked a lot, a lot. We talked about the first four traditional arts. So today, let's see how far we can go in knowing, I told you there are 10 in number, the 10 basic, these are the 10 that we'll discuss. So before we further in, let's look at the next art, which is known as what the Ibuku art, the Ibuku. The Ibuku art is one of the beautiful arts that I so much appreciate and I value so much. You know why? Because of I like the intricacy of these guys, the way they pay attention to details in producing the artifacts. If you look at the screen, you will see the very um, Ibuku pot on your right hand. That pot has made wave for Africa and for Nigeria in particular. All right, now let's look at the history of Ibuku. Now, Ibuku is, a notab is notable for three archaeological sites. Now, what do I mean by three archaeological sites? There are three major places where some of these artifacts we are found. Now, some of them are found in the excavation of what are found while excavating. Now, some of, the, some of them are bronze artifacts from a highly sophisticated bronze metal works, cultured dating perhaps to the 19th and, and to the 9th and the 10th what, century. Now, century before other known bronze of what that region now some of these artworks were excavated you know in the ninth down to the tenth century before other bronze works we are um, excavated now the first called ibu isaiah was uncovered in 1939 in 1938 rather by isaac anozier the first of this work was uncovered by what isaiah his name is Ibu Isaiah, you know, in 1938. Now this, he was digging pit toilet in his backyard. On his way doing that, he discovered that there are some metal works, some metal works under the ground. And then he dug them out and discovered that these are what? Artifacts, beautiful artifacts, you know, bronze works. So a local village, who, a local villager, however, who found a bronze work while digging beside his what his home. Now, five bronze artifacts from the what the original excavation are now in the British Museum collection. Now, the Britain when they came here, they stole some of these things and they took it down to you know to the museum. They kept it there. They are still there. If you go down there to the British Museum, you see some of these artifacts. About five of them that was excavated by Isaiah. Ibo are there. Now, they, they include a small staff, a head of a ram, a large manila, and what? An, intricate, an intricately designed crescent shaped vessel, and a small pedant in the shape of what? A tribal chief head with tattoo marks on the faces. So, now, these are the five works that was carried or that was taken towards the British Museum. Now, the first, the first one that we have there is what an intricately what designed crescent shaped vessels. And we also have what the ram head. We have a large Manila to mention what, what a few. But these are the first five objects that was found by Ibu Azaya while he was digging on beside his back. Now, formal excavation by the by archaeologist Tostan Shaw 
1959, at the request of the Nigerian government, resulted into the discovery of two other what, sites, which is what the Igbo Richard and the Igbo Jonah. These are three brothers. Igbo Isaiah being the elder brother, Igbo Richard, and then the what, Igbo Jonah. Within that community, they discovered different artifacts in different what, locations within that particular what, community. Now, some of these artifacts containing the remains of the ancient culture, later these were what, excavated as well. Later, some of all these, some, of, some, some other items were also what, excavated. Now, we have artifacts includes, some of the artifacts that we have discovered includes, we have jewelrings, we have ceramics, we have a lot of what, crumbs adorned with beautiful, intricate designs on the body of these pots or whatsoever you can call it, maybe household utensils, you know, they decorate these things and then that is exactly how some of the, how they look like. And now many assorted bronze, copper and iron objects, some of these contains materials that are evidence of a longer distance trading system extending towards to the Egypt. Now, if you trace some of these um, artifacts that we have found, you see you even trace them back towards Egypt. So it simply means that these people in Ibuku, they, 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 they had relationship with the Egyptians. They did business far there, even before the arrival of the colonial masters. Now, art came from archaeology sites found in the eastern Nigeria. It consists of objects made from bones, terracotta, beads, and ivory. They are believed to date to around 1,000 and 1200 BC to 800 AD. Objects discovered in ancient burial chambers, shrine, and what strange areas made by what sophisticated bronze casting techniques. Now, some other objects include bronze pedants, bowels, and what and shapes. Now, and shells rather. Now, these are some of what the objects that we have found in Ibuku. Now, let's look at the medium that was used by the Ibuku people. Now, the Ibuku people mainly work with what? The bronze. Majority of their works are what? Bronze. Therefore, we regard Ibuku artworks as what? Bronze work. Some of these works, they are done in bronze. So, we regard some of these artworks as bronze work. Another one I want us to look at is what? The location. Where is Ibuku? Now, Ibuku is a village in Oka in Anambra State. So, Ibuku is a village in Oka in Anambra State. There is a village in, uh, uh, there is a place, even in Ibuku, they have Ibuku Museum. So, you can actually go there to see some of these works. Beautiful works. And they are still standing the test of time. After all the years. So, that is that about Ibuku. So, if you have any questions, I would prefer maybe you jot it down. And because of this study, you will, you maybe, you will, you will, you will get the answer to your question. However, if you don't, maybe you take it to your art teacher in school. He will help you out with that. All right. So now let's go over to the characteristics features of the Ibuku art. Now, some of the general characteristics features of this artwork is that it is utility. Is it? They are what utility vessels like pots, boils, it is to mention but a few. Now they produce utility what vessels such as cup, plates, pots, and boils, and all of these things are what made with what bronze with intricate designs. Now these vessels have what geometrical decoration on them they have what geometrical what decoration on them and they also produce pedants with what insects and animal motif now the ibuku people they produce what pedants now when i talk about pedants i'm not meaning i'm not referring to your you know your necklace pedant yes they make things like that but also make wall pedants you know that, that has incense designs and what animal what motifs on them so that is that about what the ibuku all right haven't said that now let's dive into the next but before we dive into let's observe let's take a look at their works again you see how powerful and how beautiful their works is now look at the pedants we are talking about you see how intricate it looks like and look at this boil beautiful works beautiful works beautiful works look at this shell look at the intricate designs on the body of the shell look at this this verse too all these things are made out of what? Bronze. All right. 
Now let's look at the Ibibio. The Ibibio art is the sixth art. Remember, we've talked about what? Six art movements. The first one is a knock. The second is Ife. The third one is Benin. The fourth one is Ese. The fifth one is Ibuku. Now we are in the sixth one, which is known as what? The Ibibio art. The Ibibio art. All right. Now let's look at a brief history of the Ibibio people. Now the Ibibio people are located in the southern eastern Nigeria, also known as the Cats. The Castell was southern Nigeria. Now, prior to the existence of Nigeria as a nation, now the Ibibu people were self-governed. The Ibibu people became a part of the eastern Nigeria of Nigeria under the Britain colony. Now, before now, they govern themselves. The Ibibu people, they, they live by themselves, they stay by themselves, they do things by themselves, or not until the, 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 the arrival of what? The Britain. So when they came, they now merged the Ibibu people with the eastern ones that now lived as one colony under the Britain colonial rule. All right, so let's move further. Now, the Ibibio are a people of southern Nigeria and the southern eastern Nigeria. Now, they are related to the Anang and the Ethic and the Igbo people. Get this straight. This is the brief history of what the Ibibio. Now, during the, colony, the, uh, the colonial period in Nigeria, the, Ibib the Ibibio Union asked for recognition by the British as a sovereign nation in 1988. Now, the Anang, the Efik, the Ekud, the Orong, and the, Ibe, the Ibeno share personal words, names, culture, tradition with what? The Ibibio. This number of these people I just mentioned, the Anang, the Efik, the Orong, the Ibano, the Shia personal names, and even the culture, they look similar. And even their tradition, they look similar to that of what? The Ibibio. And they speak closely related what? Varieties of what? Ibibio Efik. So that is that about the Ibibio. But there are more you need to know about the Ibibio. Now, the state which the Ibibio people fall on, it falls, like I told you initially, that the, 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 the colonial masters, they now, regard, they, they now regard them or place them together with the southeast state. Now, the state was later renamed Cross River. It was later renamed was Cross River. You had your Cross River, which is the Calabar, the capital territory, on 23rd of September, 1987 by the military decree. The Aquaibom state was carved out of what the Cross River as what a separate state. Remember, it was the Ibibio that was now renamed to what Cross River. And later on, they now carved out what Aquaibom out from what the Cross, Cross River. So now that is that about what the Ibibio. Now let's look at the medium that was used by these Ibibio people. Now the Ibibio people, they were known for carving. They carve a lot and they carve a lot of works. That is what we call the Ebo, the Ebo masquerade. Now, this is some of the works that was done by the Ibibio, the, the Ibibio artists. They carve, they do a lot of works with what? With the wood. So, the major medium that is used by the Ibibio is known as what? The wood carving because they carve a lot. And then we also have what? The cane work. They do a lot of, you know, they make chairs with cane bags to mention but a few now they are they are crafty in nature so even their works explain some of them but however as we move we'll see some of the beautiful works they did now the location of ibibio now they are located around aquaibon closer towards river state so you see some of these ibibio artworks around the aquaibon part and then the river state part of the country that is where the ibibio is located all right, so now let's take a detailed look at some of their works. And let's look at the characteristic features of the work before we take a detailed look of some of the work. Now, what are the characteristic features of their work? Now, they look geometric in form. If you see some, if you just see an EBB work, some of these eight homers create, you see they look geometric in form. So, very interesting. Carved out of wood, well polished and well well designed proper analysis and everything is being taken care of then if our forefathers can do that how much more what are we what we will do even now now let's look at some the second characteristics of their work they wear ancestral figure they wear what ancestral figure with long heads and short legs <laughs> they, they wear what ancestral figures with long heads and what short legs so some of the images they make they make them their heads are very long you know the the uh, their ancestors that believe so much in the head they believe that the strength and the power of man falls in his head so that's why they lay more emphasis on the head 
than the what than the body. So some of these Ibibio's work have long head and short leg. Now, number three thing you should know as a characteristic features of this Ibibio work is that they have bowed head. They have bowed head and thick neck. Some of the sculptural work have bowed head and what thick neck. Now they have cylindrical or narrow chest with flat round abdomen. They have cylindrical or narrow chest with flat round what abdomen. Now, number five thing you should know about the Bibio art is that they also carve mask. Example, the Ebo mask of the Ikote Bene people. The Ebo mask of what? The Ikote Bene. So these are the characteristic features of the Ibibio art. I want to believe you get, you understood or you understand exactly what I'm trying to explain about the Ibibio people. Interesting artwork that was done by the Ibibio artist. All right, so now let's move further to seeing some of the Bibio artwork. Imagine this Ebo. This is the Ebo masquerade, you know? Beautiful artworks. Beautiful artworks. You see, they started practicing symmetric balance. Don't worry, we'll explain symmetric balance in, our, in subsequent classes. You see, if you divide this thing into two, the inverse opposite of this is just... How they think out these things is even what... Uh, without learning this informal... <laughs> Education. All right. So you see, you see how the head, long head. You see the fat neck, and the long head. You know, look at the abdomen. They have. They usually have bar heads. All right. So this is a perfect example of what Ibibio art. All right. So let's. The next art we are going to talk about is what Tinseido. Is what Tinseido. Tinseido is another beautiful art movement in Nigeria that I want us to look in detail what they stand for and what they represent. Now, the Nupe traditional, traditionally called the Tope by the northern Yorubas are the ethnic group located primarily in the Middle Belt and the Northern Nigeria and are the most dominant group in Niger, in Niger State. It is an important minority in Kwara State. Now, let me explain that. The, the Nupe people, they are traditionally called the Tope by the neighboring Yorubas. They are also they are an ethnic group that is located primarily in the Middle Belt and the Northern what, Nigeria and are the most dominant group in Niger State. An important minority in the Kwara State. Now let's look at some of the history of the Nupe. The Nupe traced their origin to Tiseido, who fled the courts of Ide and establish a loose confederation of towns along the Niger in the 15th century. Now, the proximity of the Nope to the Yoruba Ibo Mena people in the south and to the Yoruba Oyo people in the southeast led to cross-fertilization. Now, of the cultural influence through trade and conflict over centuries. Now, because of the fact that they, 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 share, they share common boundary, it led towards the cross-fertilization of cultural influences through what trade and what conflict of over what the centuries. I want to believe you're understanding and you're following exactly what I'm trying to explain. Beautiful. All right, now, let's see. Now, it is said that the famous Yoruba Oba of Oba or Kings, Shango, also known as Jokuta, who was once an early fan of Oyo, before being defiled following his death was the son of Nupe Tope woman. Nupe, many Nupe were converted to Muslims at the end of the 18th century by Malam Dando, a wandering preacher and we are incorporated into Fulani Empire established by the Jihad led by Usman Danfodo after 1806. So this Everything that transpired from the Nupe down to Tenseido is exactly what I'm just trying to explain. Now, many Nupe we are even converted into Islam at the end of the 18th century by what? Laman Dando. He's a, he's a, he's a wandering preacher. He's like he wanders. He's a wandering preacher who, who, who went about, you know, incorporating people into the Fulani Empire that was established by the Jihad led by Usman Danfodio after 1806. Now let's consider some of the medium that was used by the Tinseido people. 
the number one medium that was used by the Tisedo people is what is bronze. Some of these works were done with bronze. The Nubia people produced their works, eventually all their works, in bronze. I want to believe you've gotten that. All right. Now, the village that Nope is located and that Tisedo is located is in Tada village and in what? Gariga or Jiriji or Jiraji, depending on the pronunciation, Jiraji in Jaba. So, this is the location where the Tinseido is what located. Now, remember, I told us that their works are done in what? In that their works are done with bronze. It is located in Tada village, Giri, Girigi, and what? Jaba. These are the three places where these mediums are found. Now let's look at the and the, the 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 characteristics features of the Nupe and of the Tinseido rather. Now they are large figures. The Nipo people they produce large figures. Eventually it's it's, it's as if their works are some of the largest among other other works. Now they look as realistic as the Ife figure. They look as realistic as the Ife figure. Some of them pose gracefully. Some of their images pose with gracefully. Pose gracefully. Now that's one characteristic of what the Tinseido. And then finally, they wear necklace, anklets, bracelets, etc. They were well decorated. So these are the characteristic features of the Nupe people. All right. So now let's take a good look at their work. You see how how robust they look. They look very. They look well fed. They are not hungry. Wow. Look at this. Looks like a a a fighter, a war man, and this looks like a chief. These are beautiful works. All right. So finally, let's look at what the Owo. I guess that's the how much you can take for this class. Let's look at the Owo kingdom. Now the Owo art is another beautiful art I want us to consider as one of key art in Nigeria. Now the Owo is a city in Ondo state of Nigeria. Between the year 14 to 1680, it was the capital of a Yoruba city, of the Yoruba city. According to the Owo historian chief Ashara, the name Owo was, de was derived from the first ruler, which is known as what? The Oluwo of Owo, named Ojubalu. His present manner earned him the name Owo, meaning respectful. And the name was passed on to his what descendants and what followers. So now the, the, this man, because of how 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 he built himself, he was regarded to what they, he was renamed as Owo initially as against his name that was known as what Oju Balu Oju Balu. Now Oju Balu was renamed Owo, which means respectful. Now for that reason, his children and his descendants were named what Owo after him because of his influence and he was the first ruler in that part of what the state in their oral tradition Owo traces its origin to the ancient city of Ileife the cradle of Yoruba culture oral tradition also claims that the founder were the sons of the Yoruba deity Ududua who was the first ruler of the Ileife the earlier art history, um, um, historical and the archaeological record reinforce this strongly in affiliation with what the Ife culture. Owo was able to maintain virtual independence from the neighboring kingdom of Benin, but was on occasion required to give what tribute. Now it was as if the Owo people were actually having serious issue with the Benin people. Now then, but you know the Benin was an empire. The Benin grew so powerful that they subdued a lot of um, um, states or will I call them communities or communities around them. So now the Owo they enjoy you know a certain independence from their neighboring kingdoms, which is the kingdom of Benin. But what we are occasionally asked or required to give what tributes to pay homages to avoid you know further trouble. Now the transmission of current currently culture, 
flowed in both directions between the Benin and the Owo Kingdom. Now, the skill of Owo ivory carvers was also associated at the what, court of what, the Benin. Now, during the 17th and the 18th century, the Benin rulers increasingly utilized you know, some of these works that was made by the Owo artists. The ivory works, they make some of them. And they also imported some of the Owo artists and the, the Owo art objects and recruited the artisans for their own royal workshop. Now, what have I tried to explain? Now, the Benin people also looked at the Owo work and they, they liked the way they do their work. So they also employed them. They, 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 they booked them and paid them to do work for them, for their kings in their palace. So the Benin were so liberal. They work, you know, both with the Owo people, with the Ife people, to mention but a few, to create a very strong empire for themselves. Now let's look at the medium that was used by the Owo people. Now the Owo people, they work with terracotta, just like the Nok people. They work with terracotta. They also work with bronze. You see some bronze in their work. Now some of the, the location that these Owo works were found is in Owo in Ondo State. So these were the places that they discovered some of those work. And now let's look at the characteristic features of the Owo art. Now some of the characteristic features of the Owo art is that the works are very real. The works are real, they look real. Now the number two characteristic feature of the Owo art is that the figures have snakes running out from their nostril and mouth. Now they make some of this design that snakes will be coming out from the nose and from the mouth. Now it is an artistic expression, so I don't know what they have in mind while they are making that, but it is an artistic expression from, you know, based on my own idea anyway, I would just say it's an artistic expression or it represents a spiritual or a ritual purpose. So, now let's look at the third characteristic features of this work. Now, they make pots with relief on them. Now, some of these Owo arts are what pots with relief designs on them. What do I mean by relief? Now, relief are, you know, embossed works that are done on a background. So, when, whenever, whenever you see any work that is done on a background, that projects out, is known as what? The relief. Meanwhile, we have two types of relief. We have the low relief and the high relief. As we proceed in this course, I will go further to explain each and every one of those things in details. But for now, just know that they produce works, relief pots, you know, and they produce pots with relief designs on them. Now, let's look at the fifth characteristic features of the Owo art. Now, the upper eyelid of the figure overlaps their lower eyelid. The upper eyelid overlaps the lower eyelid, which means the eyes are kind of bulky. They have bulky eyes. So the upper eyelid overlaps the lower eyelid. All right, now let's consider, let's take a good look at some of the pictures of the Owo art. Now, if you see what I'm trying to explain here, now if you see some of these images, you see how big the eyes are. You know, they project, they project, they try to tell a story. So that is exactly how the Owo art looks. All right, this is how far we can go. In our next class, we'll talk about the remaining two Nigerian arts. But for now, this is how much we can take. So let me do a quick rundown to everything we've learned in this part two. Now, with the first part, we we'll talked about Ibuku art, which I explained that it was found in three different locations, Ibu Isaiah, Ibu Jonah, and Isaac. These are the three different um, Ibuku art that was found. Now, I also went further to talk about the history, a, a brief history of each and every one of all these four different arts in Nigeria. Then finally, we looked at the location of Owo, Ibuku, Ese, and what? Tensei Do. So these are the three, uh, the four major places we discuss in the course of the study. All right, thank you so very much. And now let's see and answer some of those questions. It's Q and A time. Q and A time. All right. Now state two characteristic features of Tinseido art. Hello. State two characteristic features of Tinseido art. Yes, what do you? Mm -hmm. Try. Okay. I want to believe you. You. You get it. All right. Thank you very much. So now let's look at the second question. What is the medium used in the production of Ibibio art? We talked about the Ibibio people. I went further to explain where they came from, how they originated, down to what they are now. You know, the Kralaba, down to Akwaibo, sharing common boundary with River State. So what is the medium? Which material did they use in making their works? What is the medium? 
Um, did I hear you say wood carving? That's very correct. If that's what you say, you are so correct. All right. So now I want to believe you know about the exam guide. Come on now, don't you? If you don't, okay. I, if you don't know about it, which means it is your first time of being in Sigma Tech, right? All right. So exam guide is an app that enables you, because for you to listen to me up till now, it simply means you're a serious student. Now it enables you to make an A in any exams you want to take in Nigeria. Be it YEC, call it NECO, call it JAM, call it SSCE, call it BSE. To mention but a few, you know them. Any exam you want to take, exam guide is here for you to aid you up back to back. So what are you waiting for? Use your app, download it and install it in your device so that you can follow through. Okay. Now, welcome to the exam guide homepage. All right, I want to believe you're very familiar with it by now. So first, we'll move straight to practice for BSEA. Click on objective. I hope you're following. Click on objective. All right, the class we did today is cultural and creative arts. You click on it. And then let's see question 2012. Let's do 2012, paper one. And then let's select our topics, art history. We talked about art history. So you go to art history and then you check it. Art history checked. You click on OK and then you get started. All right, so let's see question number one. It says a town in the present dash. That question is so familiar. Come on now. Question number. Let's see question number four. It's a museum mainly contains dash figure. It's a museum mainly contains dash figure. So what figures? I told you it says the town known for what 800 substance. So the answer is E. That's correct if you choose E. All right, now let's go over to which of the following art is from Nigeria? Which of the following art is from Nigeria? Is it Akubado? Is it Bambara mask? Is it Benin art? Is it Dan mask? Is it Nimba figure? So which one? Benin art. You're so very correct. So now let's see. Aha, I like this question. Now there are three images there. You remember I explained I showed you some of those pictures. I told you to pay clean attention to them. Now we're going to answer all of it. Now look at this question. Let's say use this question. Use the pictures above to answer this question. Figure I. I guess figure I is this very figure. Yeah, now beautiful. Figure I. Figure I is an origin. Is an origin of dash art. Figure I is an origin of dash art. Let's see our options. We have Benin art. We have essay art. We have Ife art. We have knock art. And we have Tada art. So which figure do you think is this? Come on now. Yes. Did I hear you say Ife? Ife? If you say Ife, you're very correct. The answer is what? Ife. So now let's look at this next question. After that very one, I guess question seven. A beautiful. Now they say the figure I I, which is the one at the middle. The figure I I. Beautiful. So the figure I I represents is a symbol of dash art. What figure? Which art is this? Is a popular art we should know. First act seven seven mask. <laughs> All right. So it's a representation of what? The first act seven seven mask. That is the, 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 the logo of Society of Nigerian Artists. So that's the same logo. All right. So finally, let's look at our last question for today before we tell it bye by question number eight. Beautiful. Now, which art culture does that picture in figure I I I represent? Which art does the figure in figure I I I represent? A Benin, B S C Ibuku, D Tenseido, and E Knock Art. So, what exactly does it represent? And that is knock art. You're very correct. Thank you for participating in today's class. You can practice more questions using the exam guide.
Now the app scores and give a detailed explanation of all the questions at the end of your practice test. Now you can learn a particular topic of interest with different modes like study mode, mock mode, and practice mode. It also have other features that make learning fun. Now it is a must have for all serious students. Download the app from www.examguide.com if you don't have it yet. See you in the next class. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell, and then share this video to anyone you know that would benefit from it. Thank you and bye-bye.